Could you imagine if Valorant was a turn-based strategy game? Like, what if when I played Valorant, I would just make my move and then they would make their move, and then if my move was the correct move, I would just win. We don't have to deal with aim or mechanics or anything else that is so easy to mess up. What if it was just you queued up the right action and there was nothing your opponent could do about it? Well, believe it or not, that world actually sort of exists. Valorant isn't a turn-based strategy game, but in many ways, it is a strategy game. And there is actually a super helpful rule I've been following for the last few months that makes the game infinitely easier to win. I call this the higher or lower rule, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you a few examples of how this rule can actually be applied to help save you literally multiple rounds a game. Before we get into it though, I just wanted to give a shout out to a couple of the skillcap.com subscribers who've reported some crazy rating improvements in Valorant. These players are doing an awesome job climbing, and it's super amazing to hear that our users actually feel like we've helped them improve. So many of you really do have what it takes to reach the higher ranks, sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of guidance. I don't want to keep you all from the video though, but if you wanted to test out our service for yourself to see similar gains, be sure to check out skillcap.com, link in the description below. Now for what you've all been waiting for though, and I actually wanted to start out by playing a little bit of a game. I want to see if you can guess what this rule is. Take a look at these two nearly identical rounds and see if you can tell me the major difference in how I played both of these scenarios. I think those are the that, oh, hell, hell, hell. Never mind. One enemy remaining. DT is awesome. Nice. Done. Where's the game? Where's the game? Don't mess with me. Watching here. What have it? Last player standing. Cutting through. Seven yen. Yen. Fake teleport. One enemy remaining. <laughs> Were you able to tell the difference? It's pretty subtle in this clip, but there's absolutely still a clear difference in how I played both of these rounds, and it's for good reason. In the first clip that you watched, you'll notice it's actually at the start of the round. Our team gets a few good entries, and we get onto site with really healthy numbers. It's actually a 4v2 at one point, and many players may take this opportunity to push up and try to get some more kills, but this would have actually been a really bad idea. You already know why this is a bad idea. It just has to do with basic math. In Valorant, a very common strategy is to push the enemies together so that if one of you gets killed, your teammate can trade that kill out. But if we have four players and they only have two, what it's going to happen is they're just going to end up losing the round. This is why during a round where it's 4v2, the enemy team is going to be trying as hard as they can to isolate their gunfights. They want me to push up in this scenario. They want me to get over aggressive and give my life away so that they can make it into a 2v3. But I don't. I just stay in the corner and I play off the crossfire for my teammate. And even after I get this first kill, I'll teleport away so that I can't be traded because I know that I'm low HP. This is the higher lower rule. When your team is ahead in numbers, you play safe and with your teammates. And when your team is behind in numbers, you try to work some picks and find isolated gunfights. Not necessarily spread out, but sometimes spreading out is a good idea to try to split up the defenders and find those 1v1s. Now, let's compare this to the second round. In the second round, you'll notice my team is not ahead in numbers. We are in a 2v4, and I can see on the map that there is a lot of pressure in mid right now. I use this as an opportunity to take a little bit of a risk, assuming I may have the timing on an A player and I walk into A site for free. I hug the left wall to assure that if they walk into site, I'm not going to be in the middle of nowhere, and because of this, I'm actually able to find our first pick of the round and turn this into a 2v3. But the thing is, we're still down in numbers, and because of that, we still lose that math equation that we talked about earlier. If they just trade out their kills, we still lose this round. So I want to make that as difficult as possible for them to trade out their kills. And to do this, what I'm 
going to do is rather than backing up after I get the first kill like they might have expected me to, I'm going to push further. This is the higher lower rule in action. We're still down to numbers, so we need a pick. And because I'm aware of this, I'm able to actually find another 1v1 onto the enemy jet. And you'll notice immediately after this pick, I back off and try to play the 2v2 with my teammate. Things do get a little hectic after my flash misses and Brimstone dies without getting a kill, but we're still able to clutch out this round. And this doesn't happen if I don't play aggressive for those first two picks. Even when I find myself in a 1v2, you'll still see I play aggressive to even out the round once again. I like these rounds because they both take place on the same site, but let's take a look at this rule in action a few more times to give you a better idea. Because I'm not joking when I say that this rule is going to win you rounds you shouldn't win and save you rounds that you would normally lose. Speaking of rounds that we shouldn't lose, let's take a look at a round that I threw personally. If you take a look at this round, you'll actually see that we're in a 3v1 versus the enemy breach. Surely this round isn't losable, right? Well, it's actually a lot easier to lose than you might think. Normally, if we're following our higher lower rule, our team would just all make sure that we're grouped up and that the breach can't isolate his gunfights. But because Sage ends up getting the spike down, she actually decides to try and hold this while neither Chamber nor myself are in position to trade her. So that's how Sage died. And then I teleported back site to try and set up a crossfire when he swings my Chamber, but I was kind of worried that he could grab the spike from main, so I tried to peek for info and... Well, yeah. This was a terrible play by me, and if I had looked at the map, I'd see that my chamber wasn't in position to help me, but I didn't. I just kind of peeked it, and then I died. I didn't follow the higher lower rule, and because of that, I left the round entirely in my chamber's hands, and then we lost. Keep in mind that Sage had calmed that he hit breach for 130, so this round on paper was pretty unlosable, but because we weren't following our higher lower rule, we found pretty much the only way that we could have lost this round. Let's look at one more round that we probably shouldn't have lost. Notice how in this round our team is in a 2v1 and the enemy jet shows herself in garage and the only gun that she has is a classic maybe i wasn't clear enough when i said that so let me reiterate that our sova has an operator jet has a classic but hey he's messing around a little bit jumping around while exposed to multiple angles and suddenly it's a 1v1 after the cypher's in a 1v1 anything can really happen we can't fault the cypher he was just trying to plant the spike but the person who didn't follow our higher lower rule was the sova he could have just played Played safe, got on the spike down, and then played off of his cipher, but instead he kind of just got himself killed and we lost the round. Now, honestly, think about how many rounds you lose because of stuff like this, when following such a simple rule could quite literally save you games. This rule can be incredibly dynamic, though, as you could imagine, because oftentimes, if you're applying it correctly, you're going to have to change how you're playing in practically an instant. Remember in that Haven round after I killed the jet, how I fell back to play with my teammate? Take a look at this round where my teammates were in a 2v3. They're down in numbers, so as per our rule, they should try and play aggressive. Look for a pick and try to even out those numbers. So, to create an opening, they cut noise on A and wait to re-engage. If they're jumping around making a ton of noise, the enemies know exactly where they are and they all just group up to trade each other out. But when they cut noise, the enemies start to get nervous and they think maybe they rotated, and they start to spread out a little bit more to gather that information. And as you see, the omen does just that. He's pushing to see if they're still there, and well, he got his answer. Cutting noise isn't exactly an aggressive play, but it is a great way to create more opportunities for 1v1s, as you can see right here. Now they're in a 2v2, and you may wonder if when you're ahead in numbers, you're supposed to play safe, and when you're behind in numbers, you're supposed to play aggressive. What do you do when you're even in numbers? The answer to this is, it's a fair game. I probably I wouldn't recommend doing anything too risky, but if you feel like you have an opening to give your team the advantage, feel free to take it. I probably wouldn't run towards site with your back to heaven like this chamber did, but I guess I do like the idea of him grouping up with this sage, so whatever. He wins a very weird fight, and then suddenly our team actually has numbers advantage. Following our higher lower rule, these players should just play crossfires and trade the raise out when she pushes into site. But that's not really what happens. In their current position, the chambers should be the one playing off of the sage's con. Contact because as you can see, when the chamber swings, the sage can't really help him because there is a wall in the way. Because of this, the raise isolates one gunfight and is able to win the 1v1 afterwards to finish out the round. Kind of the theme of this guide, but this sucks. But it was avoidable if in the moment chamber recognized, cool, we're in a 2v1, let's just trade each other out and then we win.
It's the higher lower rule. It's quick, it's easy, and it works. We've showed a few situations where this rule was applied correctly and where it was applied incorrectly though. Let's take a look at one more round where I actually take advantage of the higher lower rule and it helps me clutch out a round one versus five. You don't need teammates to utilize this. It's just an important part if you do have teammates alive. The rule still applies though, even when you're in a 1v5. I'm behind in numbers, so I need to play aggressive. This is why in this round, you'll notice after I get the first trade, I actually hold the angle waiting for another other player to swing me and they do. They're looking for a trade on their stage, but the problem is that they're too late on it. I actually want this player to swing me because I'm still in a 1v4 and I need more kills to even out the round. Even after I kill the second player, you'll notice I still hold for a third one because I know that Brimstone is back site and if I just try to run in and plant the spike, I'm going to lose the round. Unfortunately, due to the timing, I realize that he is not going to swing me and due to the raise making a ton of noise behind me, I know that I need to leave right now. So this is where I apply my ultimate. I use this to reposition towards a site to give myself some more time to get the spike down and some more space where I can isolate those 1v1. If I just stay in octagon, I have no room to work with. I'm just going to get surrounded. But you'll notice after teleporting away, I'm now able to make use of this extra space and push towards heaven to catch another player off guard. Once again, I'm referring you back to our higher lower rule. I'm still in a 1v3. I still lose this if I let them group up too easily. Because of this reposition, I'm able to pick up a third kill in this 1v5, and now I'm going to reposition again to catch the enemies off guard once more. I take a long route all the way around towards short, and it gets a little bit frisky from here after I miss a few shots, but once again, I'm aware that even in a 1v2, I still can't just be swinging the spike diffuser. The Reyna is still holding me from heaven, and if I just swing, I likely lose this fight, so this is why I teleport across to U-Haul to try and find another angle. Even after killing three players on the enemy team, I am still following this higher lower rule. I'm still trying to play aggressive and catch the enemy team off guard, and because of this, I'm able to win a very unlikely round. Think about it. If I just sat back and waited in octagon for them to push me at the start of the round, I literally just lose. But I use my movement abilities to help me get some space and work the map, and because of this, we come out on top. And that's why the higher lower rule works. It's so good, it simplifies the game, and it makes stuff like this a really easy decision. We're down in numbers, we push. We're ahead in numbers, we play safe. Similarly, as you could imagine, if the enemy team was following this rule, it would be very unlikely I'm able to clutch out this round. But they didn't, and I did. This is all just a taste of the content that we offer over on the website, though. Over on the website, our coaches have loads of videos where they break down actual games from our skillcap.com subscribers, as well as matches where they walk you through exactly how to carry in your rank. These guides are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to content, as we can only cover so many things in a 10 to 20 minute video. Over on the site, we're able to break down all of the nitty gritty details of the game, and what is actually holding you back in Valorant. All of this is even backed by our rank improvement guarantee, meaning that if you don't actively improve while using our service, it's literally no risk. That's going to be all for us today though. As always, my name is King and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.